factors in generating analog sound is pitch. <laughs> and I know we want our synths to be in tune. One of the biggest complaints people have about an analog synth, they're like, oh my gosh, it's out of tune. I can't trust it to be in tune. And no, you can't because the thing that gave analog oscillators their characteristic sound was that they were old fashioned and basic and uh, those designs varied in pitch. And to be honest, that's kind of at the core of what we really want. We want an oscillator that can't hold its pitch. Uh, and I know that terrifies a lot of people. They're like, well, how am I going to record you know, the synth if it's not staying in tune? And the answer is, well, you have to work at it. <laughs> it's hard. But the good news is if we're doing something like we are with this digital synthesizer, you have a level of control over it that will keep it in the ballpark you want to keep it in, but it needs to not stay in tune. Okay, so if we go into this synth right here, uh, Dave Smith Instruments, which is what this is, this is a DSi Pro 2. DSi became sequential. And uh, so when Dave Smith made this, he recognized that there are things that people want from oscillators. And he gave us these four digital oscillators and we might want them to be a little less rigid in their pitch. Of course, there's a million ways to deal with that, but he gave us a really simple way to deal with it. And uh, that is... Um, there's, well, there's a number of them. Uh, the primary way is we go into each individual oscillator and we go into OSC mods and there is what is called oscillator slop. Now, I don't know to what degree, I'm not sure exactly, well, let's see if we can figure it out. We'll turn it all the way up. <laughs> Okay, I don't know if you can hear that. You probably can. Basically, what oscillator slop is, is oscillator drift. So, okay, let's let's do a test. We'll start oscillator two. Let's get it going. Let's give it a shape and output level. So now we have two oscillators happening. So let's go into oscillator two and go to its oscillator slop and we'll be able to hear what it is doing in comparison to oscillator one, which now does not have any slop on it, right? Yeah. Okay, those, those beats that you're hearing, that pulsing, that is, we're basically hearing oscillator to speed up and slow down, go higher and lower as far as frequency is concerned. And so what that is, is that's basically what we call drift. Drift is what oscillators definitely do in analog synthesizers. Over time, they move from one you know, close element of the frequency to another. And so people have this, this sense that like they're going to get an analog sound if they have oscillator drift. And that's, it's true, you, you definitely can. And this one's changing all the time, so you're gonna get different sounds all the time. And you do hear that in analog sense. But the thing that I've always done is that's not the only thing going on in regard to pitch. There are fluctuations in pitch that are much smaller than it slowly going up and slowly going down. And I want to show those to you. Here's what I would do. What I would do uh, is go in a little bit deeper with this. Let's go to oscillator two and let's give it shape. We have some noise in here somewhere. Uh, oh yeah, we totally have some noise. It's way up high though. Okay, we have uh, different types of noise. 
I'm going to choose red noise because red noise, as we can see from the image here, has a lot of low frequency in it. And low frequency means variations that are slower. So what I'm then going to do is I'm going to go into our mod section and I'm going to choose the source, which is oscillator two and the destination oscillator one's frequency. So then let's add a lot just to begin. <laughs> there, there's your analog sound. That was easy. Okay, that's all for now. No, um, <laughs> that's obviously too much modulation. But you can tell this is a modulation that is way different than the frequency slowly moving up or moving down. So, okay, now we're back to, we're, we're down low here. This is only 10, but we've got our pitch back. But as you're listening to it, you can hear how the noise is affecting the pitch. There's a warble in it. It's going, ah, it has that sort of, that shake in it. Now, some vintage oscillators, believe it or not, and probably when they're broken, uh, actually sound like that. And I think if even back then, if you were using an analog synth and your oscillator sounded that variable, uh, <laughs> you'd probably take it in to get fixed. But still, that's literally what we want. We just don't want that much of it. Let's go down to five, see where that's at. Still, it's still kind of more audible than maybe we might want. How's that? Can you hear, can you still hear the modulation that's taking place? Or does this just sound like a messy oscillator? Because the messy oscillator level is what we're aiming for. I bet we could even go down to three. Yep. Okay, so this is an oscillator whose pitch is not stable, but it's not like slop unstable, which means it's kind of going up and going down. It means it is unstable from one moment to the next on, you know, on a waveform level instead of a frequency level, if that makes any sense. <laughs> And that is one of the elements that gives us analog sound is basically variations in, uh, you know, the periodic waveform on this level where it's just, it can't hold it together at all. And then on top of that, there's drift. So it's moving up and down. Um, let's bring in oscillator three so we can hear the difference between these. That'd be a cool thing to compare them. Okay, oscillator three. Uh, let's first of all oscillator two do we have any volume on that because we shouldn't okay oscillator three we can go in here choose a shape we'll choose sawtooth and give it output level now you can really hear the variation i would say we could even bring that down more That oscillator is all over the place. So then, then on top of that, we could add oscillator slop and uh, get something that was more akin to a vintage, messy old synthesizer. And then of course, you know, we want to go into oscillator three and give it uh, some variation in frequency. It's still a little bit extreme, but I wonder if we changed, what would happen if we changed the type of noise? Let's see. Yeah, actually white noise seems like it's a little less overt. I mean, you could mess it around because maybe, you know, if you want a more smoother, a smoother, 
variation, maybe go with white noise. But if you want a really messy thing like <laughs> Moog Sonic 6 territory, uh, red noise might be better. But... but we can hear, you know, the frequency variation that's coming from these oscillators being set to different frequencies. We're hearing the messiness generated by the noise modulation. And then, you know, we could theoretically uh, just even go into wherever. Oh, it's back here somewhere. Uh, Osmods. Oh, we got that slop still all the way on. Okay. <laughs> Already, we have a much less digital sounding oscillator, but yeah, we've we've taken a hit there because it's now it's no longer steady, it's no longer pretty, it's uh, kind of wild, you know, it's it's crazy, uh, and that's kind of what we want. And if you've got all of your oscillators sounding that way, which we don't have set up, you're going to have a very rich and alive sound before we even get to the filter. And because your oscillators are rich in, in wildness and in waveform variation, and we're going to talk more about waveform variation in another video, uh, you're going to have a way more interesting sound. And that's one of the aspects of analog that is appealing is it sounds more like an acoustic sound because it's much more complex than the very steady, unchanging periodic output of a digital oscillator. And that's basically what we've done. We have added a huge amount of variation in the in oscillator one's waveform uh, in its frequency. So it's got frequency modulation happening from a noise source. So that's random frequency modulation. And we also have it out of tune with the third oscillator at this time because the second oscillator is providing our noise. And then we have slop on top of that. So <laughs> it's drifting over time and uh, all of those things are going to give you a more primitive old-fashioned oscillator instead of this slick digital oscillator which is going to give you more of an analog sound so that is kind of step one of creating an analog sound with a digital oscillator <laughs>